motorcycle intelligent car machine. Kind of confusing. You can use it on a motorcycle, but even like the carp, you're right, even though it's meant for motorcycles, like I said in the video, you can use any of these in the car. They're just Apple CarPlay on a screen or Android Auto. I always say Apple CarPlay because I use Apple phones on all these devices. You can use Android Auto as well. So there's going to be a couple points you can take away from this video. Number one, of course, we're going to be taking a look over this device. But as much as I don't want it to be a comparison video, I will be comparing it up to the Carpy Ride and just talking about my experiences, what feels better, what operated better, so on and so forth. Just again, because they're both similar concepts, I want to let you know which one is better. But a couple things I can point out about this one, just looking at the box, I haven't popped this open or anything yet. But you see here it has tire pressure monitor system and it also has a remote. I don't know if it says it anywhere on the box right here, but um, online you can see it orders with remote. They said they were sending the tire pressure in the remote because those are two add-on devices. It doesn't just come with the main unit, but um, we'll see what they gave us here. So let's go on and pop this open and look it over. Here's the user manual here. So yeah, yeah. So here if you see in the manual, you can see the uh, TPMS and then the buttons or the remote. So hopefully those are included in there. I'm curious about their mounting bracket. Uh, let's see what else we have. So again, basic operation, which is gonna be the exact same. Let's go on first. You know what, we'll just get right to the meat and potatoes here and check out the unit. And I'll tell you what, just feeling this, it feels more, uh, would premium be the right word? It feels and looks more premium than the Carpy Ride. So here's the Carpy Ride. It kind of feels like a, uh, I don't know, it is lighter, but weight doesn't make something premium, right? You got this little sunshade up on the Carpy Ride. This one you do not, but this feels more like a mobile phone or a um, Garmin navigation. It's just that bezel-less right there. You do got the bezels within the screen, but as far as here, it's just butter smooth. It rolls around. It just... It feels very premium, it, it really does. Uh, the Carpy Ride again feels like a classic navigation that you would have in your car. Anyways, let's go and set that aside and let's see if we do have that remote and stuff in here or the buttons as they call it, which I believe is this here. Let me go and put that over there. So yes, here is the remote little bit, which you have a camera button. I wonder what that does. I wonder if I can control my camera with it. That'd be pretty stinking cool. Not sure what that does. Um, yeah, the phone button, an OK, a refresh or whatever, and then track skip. So I'm really curious if this will sync up with my camera or, again, my comms. And here is our mounting bracket. Now, this mounting bracket is plastic. Uh, that's just for the remote. So, again, you know, I don't think we can really pick that apart. The remote's quite light here. I'm just going to set that aside. Over here is all of our mounting hardware, I believe. So this one, as you see, it's going straight to the battery. I don't know why we got three wires. Interesting. We'll have to check that one out there. You get this little plug here, which is going to water seal it. Let's see what else we got. Here's our little mounting arm. This is metal, actually. Um, the Carpuri one was plastic, and this is... I don't remember if the Carpuri one was longer than this. You all know I created my own little gizmo. As you can see right here, this is what I created. That is actually shorter because this is the one I bought. And then it just goes right there. So pretty cool. I don't know. I like the mount I made. We'll have to see if this one works out because I don't want it being super big. Down here, uh, some zip ties. And then what do we got? This is the mount. And okay, I want to see this before we get into the other stuff. So you got rubber gaskets if you need something smaller. Here is the actual mounting bit that's going to go on your bar. So I like that. It's not, not as big as the Carpy Ride one. So, and again, you don't have all that stuff intruding right there. So if you put it on your bars, bam, you can mount it up here and then take the unit right like that. So uh, I really like this here. And again, I like how robust this feels. This is metal. This bracket around here is metal. Um, that ball is kind of soft rubber like you would expect on a ram mount. So it will hold its position pretty nice. And in the last bag here, we do have the tire pressure monitoring stunt. You see the little uh, locking nuts right down there. That's so no one can steal it. So when you lock it in, it gets super tight. You got the little wrench that comes with it. Um, they're kind of big. Um, as you can see, I'll put my thumb. You can see next to my thumb, it's almost as big as a thumbnail. But again, that's going to be really cool to see our tire pressure 
right on our screen. So with our new one car stereo unit here, I'm gonna actually be putting that on the Triumph Scrambler, the 1200 XC, and I'm gonna keep the Carpy Ride on the 300L Rally once of course we get those wires. But what I'm gonna do over here on the Triumph, I just put this recent uh, unit garage, the XL windscreen on right there, but not really focusing on the windscreen. What it came with was this little like navigation type bar back there, and you actually have some space. The Triumph one, you didn't have any space, so you kind of got this nice bar back there, and it'll mount it up there. I think our bracket's gonna go there. We got this little cutout for wind, which is gonna be really nice. Of course, you got that unit sitting behind the windscreen. You don't want it overheating, so I think that's gonna serve a good purpose to be able to cool it down, and I think it'll be hopefully a perfect fit. Hopefully it doesn't block my, uh, my cluster right down here too much. But anyways, I'm not gonna bore you guys with installation. As you see, I got four screws. I'm gonna take off my windscreen, mount it to that, run my wires, and then I'll get back with you guys and we'll set it up and go through it all together just to see if it's smooth and seamless. I just wanna show you what I did here real quick. Again, I didn't wanna bore you with installation, but with the headache I'm having, hopefully I can save you guys the headache. And it, of course it will differ bike to bike. We're using, again, my Triumph uh, Scrambler 1200 XC. Anyways, so let me flip you around here and you're gonna see what I have going on. So the red wire is going into, again, the USB socket, which is under the seat. The yellow wire is going to the power. And then you can see the red wire here is going into that white, which the white goes down to the green. And this is what does the USB underneath the seat. Again, this bit here is for your key. Back here you have the unit. Obviously that's not where it's gonna be. I just want it there so whenever I hit the power button you can actually see. So I'm gonna come up here to the bike. I'm gonna hit the power button right now. You just saw it hit power. The unit is going to turn on. You can see right there it's loaded up. Now we're gonna go through all the settings and everything. This is just, again, just making sure I got the wiring correct and everything. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to Triumph and I hit that power button. Ignition off and you can see the unit came off. One more time, hitting the power button right there, turning it on, and you'll see the unit turns on again. As much of a headache as this was for me, I've kind of thinking, okay, red to red, let me put the yellow to the accessory bit or something. It just didn't work like that. I, I don't know what's going on. The instructions are horrible, so hopefully my headache could save you a headache. So as you can see, I have the unit installed, and this is not the run through. I just wanna show you this installation because I've been riding around with it for a few days. And again, we got it connected to my um, navigation bar on there. And this will differ bike to bike and setup to setup, right? But I want to show you a setup like this. It's pretty darn annoying. I'm just on a back road here, so the roads aren't amazing by any means. Let me make sure that guy holds up for me. Okay. But anyways, if you just look at the unit here, you can see it bouncing like crazy. Again, I'm on a back road, so if you're on a nice, clean, crisp highway, it's probably not going to be as bad. But still, it's just absolutely annoying. And not so much just the bouncing, because I'm sure it will you know, move around anywhere. But what I'm gonna do is go on and just take this whole unit and put it down here. I really like this setup a lot better. And again, on the Triumph, I can angle that down if I want, or up a little bit more, whatever. But right now, it's perfectly in line, and it's not bouncing around. Like, through all these bumps we're doing, I mean, this road is not the best, right? and it's pretty darn stable. But with the little bit of movement it does, it's not annoyingly right in front of my face. So very happy with this position a lot more. Now even doing some light off-roading like this, this is just a service road, nothing extreme obviously, but hopefully you guys can see that in the camera. It's not bouncing around any more than my bars, you know? I could imagine if it was still up there how much it's bouncing, like just looking at the windscreen. The windscreen looks like it's bouncing more than the uh, our CarPlay uh, unit here. Now, one thing I want to show you before we actually dive into the unit and talk about it, I want to show you again whenever you're riding and using gloves here. So, as you can see, you got your maps, whatever you use, Google or whatever. Again, I use Apple, so this is CarPlay. And then you got your music, but it is so responsive. I can just tap right there, bam, my map comes up, tap over there, go back, come over here to my music. And as you see, it's just super responsive right to the point right there and if you come back here to the main menu this is where you have all of your other apps and such as you see right there your Gaia on extra off Rever, whatever Google and then you can just swipe over to again whatever you want and if you go home this is the main menu which again I'm gonna park I don't want to go through all this while I'm riding but again there's the main menu you can see the tire pressure and everything then you got your Android Auto your settings and bam, right back to CarPlay. It's just super 
responsive. So now I want to talk about actually using this device and hopefully you guys can hear me. It's a little windy. As you can see, we're out here by the water and I thought this would be a whole lot more fun talking about using this unit out here rather than in my garage. So hopefully you all can see this just fine here. At my camera, I just got a wicked glare in the background here because all the sun and the wind is shaking the camera as well. But anyways, talking about the unit, it's pretty much core again your apple carplay right you tap down here you have all your apps your messages whatever other apps you use for me i can use my guide down here now again there's no pinch to zoom it's really just you can pan out with the minus or zoom in with the plus or get your arrows and then kind of pull around right there no pinch zoom which does stink um, but again whatever other apps you want rever your on x your google maps uh right over here let me get to it and again, you can just kind of pull around, just no zooming. But that's not a device thing, as we noticed with the uh, Carpy Ride. That's really an Apple CarPlay thing. You can notice in your car, you can't pinch and zoom either. But again, it's really responsive, really nice. The screen is really nice. Again, it looks just like a phone, as I mentioned before. The Carpy Ride was a little bit bigger, kind of felt more like a navigation device when this feels more like a phone mounted to your car and again it's just very responsive as far as if you got your map set right there pulling it back over here getting into the menu of the device itself you click home and then as you see you got carplay android auto turn off device your settings which i'll show you over here let me go and click on settings and i'm going to get my helmet and show you i use cardo on all of my helmets and going over to bluetooth here once you enable it and then pair device, just sync it up, what's gonna happen is your Cardo is paired to your phone, right? And then this is gonna also pair to your phone. So it's almost like two separate devices, but this is still like your phone. So whatever you control through here is gonna be controlled through there since this is through your phone. Hopefully that makes sense. Making it quite simple. All you do is pair this to your phone, pair that to your phone. These don't have to pair together and then it just operates simple like that. So anyways, that's using Cardo, not sure about Senna, but these are your basic settings over here, your Bluetooth, again, your system. The cool thing is you go to network and this, oh geez, big wind. So hopefully the camera's not making you motion sick here. But anyways, you can go to network and actually update the device over the air. No need for SD cards or anything goofy like that. So that's pretty cool. And then of course you got your general. Now, one thing real quick in general, you got theme, you got light or dark, which is black and then white and then auto, which it'll switch by itself. Languages, right out of the box, this was set when you go in here. It was set to, I guess, Chinese, whatever the top one is. So I kind of had to guess, okay, which one's English. So I pressed that and then got that. And we'll backtrack here. You got your brightness and then time, of course. We'll back out of there. Now, the one thing I want to show you here is the TPS, uh, TPMS, right? Tire Pressure Monitoring System, right here is the sensor for the tire pressure and again as i showed you before it's about as big as my thumb looking at it back on the wheel it's not obnoxiously crazy by any means it is big but again you really don't notice it especially on a black wheel that'll depend bike to bike but i did also check again the tire pressure from here and then over on both wheels just checking to see okay does it match is it off how accurate is it and it was pretty much spot on maybe a point and a half or so off if even but it was pretty much spot on right there of course with the heat and everything it'll change up so but it was pretty much spot on so i will definitely rely on that and it's pretty cool again so you got car play and if you want to get to the tire pressuring set you pet home and then bam that's just right over there and you can get all your other information over there or adjust it however you want now the last thing i want to talk about with this whole setup we got is this little remote over here and pretty much what it does is lock the screen you, you got your phone call you can go back to bring you to the main screen over here and then again lock the screen and unlock it and skip track if you want but obviously looking at it here i'm sure you guys can agree with me is like why have that remote when the device is right here and i just press that or i can control it through my headset or talk to it um, that's going to depend on your bike setup so if you have this setup somewhere further your dash is way far back okay maybe this will be beneficial but for my setup with it right here on the bars heck even if it was up there still i still don't think I would use the remote. It does light up at night and everything, which is nice, but it also doesn't stay on there very good. So, you know, if I'm on doing some off-road and I notice it kind of just get a little bit loose and pop up there, doesn't really lock down. But even other than any of that, I just think it's pointless because again, for my setup, the device is right there. So that's really gonna depend on you and how yours is set up. So my final thoughts and conclusion on this device here, uh, comparing to the Carpride, even though this isn't a comparison, but I just wanna refer to that. 
I really like this one, especially on my scrambler. It just gives it that aesthetically pleasing uh, vibe. It looks like a phone placed up there, right? Where again, the carpet ride looked like a navigation deal. I will tell you, I do like the carpet ride better on my 300L Rally because again, the screen is a little bit bigger. It's got that little sunshade over it. I'll catch myself sometimes noticing a little glare. So I kind of angle this down a bit. So I think off-roading, I do like the carpet ride a bit better, but unfortunately still the carpet ride is not working. And I actually got my wires for that and it still won't power on so i'm not sure what's going on hopefully i can get a new unit in house and test it and put it through the ringer again but again it's really a stinker that that thing is not working i want to do a follow-up video but right now all it would be is hey it's not working you know so again make sure to subscribe hit the bell and we can hopefully do a follow-up on that but right now i really do like this device here especially on more of a road bike if you got any other questions about this device please ask down in the comments because this is going to stay on my scrambler and i'll be able to give you some feedback and how it's faring up and if you got any other quirks that you got questions about i'll definitely uh, hopefully try to be able to answer those so again thank you so much for coming by to this one if you enjoyed it and if it was able to help you out please hit that thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and i hope to catch you on the next one bye now